Hey everybody and welcome to another Kataria Fables video. In this video I am going to be showing to you on how to get the Pearl item. The Pearl item is required for various different weapons and upgrades throughout the game. Um, one of them is actually the Holy Sword upgrade which is the final sword of the game requiring two Pearl and two Sunstone. If you don't know how to get Sunstone, watch my video on Sunstones because I actually have shown you how to get that item. Uh, there's also various other things like some of the best armor in the game also requires pearl, but luckily there are no bows that require pearl. But if you're looking for pearl through the sword, the sword route, then you are in the right place. So in order to get the pearl, you actually have to already unlock the entire northern section. What do I mean by that? What I mean is the section above the mountain tunnel entrance. The way that you do this is you actually have to eventually get the turtle shell item. And the turtle shell item is actually going to let you finally make that dynamite to blow up the wall here and then finally go through the dungeon to uh, end up on West Cars Hills. Simply traversing through West Cars Hills, East Cars Hills, will eventually make it into the mountain field. And, funny enough, when you actually make it all the way to East Cars Hills right before the mountain field, there's actually a checkpoint so it's very, very easy to make it back over there. Let me demonstrate. Taking this here is going to take us right directly south of the uh, mountain village area, which is right at the very top, uh, and that's part of the main quest. Again, this part is not missable. You actually do have to go through it. So if you're in a position where you have not gone to the snowy, icy land, the simple solution is this. Advance to the story more. It's that simple. Because you cannot sequence break and try to get the pearl super early in the game until you actually, you know, get to this part. Here's the mountain field. This is the town. So all you have to do, and again, there's a warp right here that can take you back to town, but all you have to do is move directly down here, which is literally the place where you are warping in from if you're taking the checkpoint, to the place known as East Karst Hills. In East Karst Hills, you're going to find several uh, enemies around here. Uh, you'll find a couple of these bats, you'll find some of those other enemies right there, and then here's the big guy that you actually want to face. This is actually the creature that ends up dropping the item. I did not actually mean to press that skill right there. I am so sorry about that. <laughs> um, but I'm actually going to remove this thing. Because this is the normal movement speed you might actually have. Um, all you have to actually do here, and it could get a little tricky if you are coming here for the very first time. You want to clear out all these enemies here. The mini boss himself is actually docile. So what I suggest doing is before you attack the mini boss, clear out all this other crap. Um, clear them all out. Um, I actually realized I don't have any uh, mana left, so I should actually do some attacks here to get some back. That's all you have to do, just simply attack them. Uh, I will let you know, you have to be very, very careful about specifically a couple things, and it's good that I'm demonstrating this. You can get frozen pretty easily, you have to be incredibly careful. These enemies in particular, though, what are they called? Stone, uh, stone fiends? Uh, they actually have a little bit of a, a deflecting type of attack if you hit them physically. Uh, let me show you. See how I took 12 damage? You take a very small percentage of damage every time you hit them physically. So what I suggest doing is actually using spells to hit them from afar. Because if you hit them from afar with spells, you actually will not take that deflecting damage. And that makes it so much easier, you know, to deal with them. They're almost dead. Uh, but I also am running out of a more mana again, so I should actually attack them. There we go. And then you just simply keep doing that. It's a little tedious and it does take a little while to do that, but I, it is highly worth it. Trust me when I say this, it is highly worth it. There's only a couple things left here. There we go. Got rid of you. There's a bat here. Let me go and kill the bat. Alright, so once the area is cleared of enemies, for the most part, you want to go ahead and attack them. Now I'm going to try to get him a little far away from that tree so you can actually see what is going on and the tree doesn't block you. And he went the other way. Well, I'll have to attack him. When you hit him once... He will actually fight back. He has a couple attacks. He has a regular physical attack. He has a projectile attack of like shooting ice right in front of him. Which is actually pretty easy to dodge. And then he has a giant AoE move of ice. That's basically the attacks. All you have to kind of know is the attack pattern. And what he's going to do to you. There's a physical attack. So all you want to do is, you know, keep attacking him while he, cook, uh, while he keeps doing all his moves. There's the giant... Icy attack, don't get anywhere in that circle when he does the giant uh, icy attack. You want to wait until it goes away, and then you actually can go ahead and attack him. Like that. Uh, pretty simple, but if you are hitting him physically a good amount of time, it's also good to actually use some uh, magic occasionally, so you can try and burn him. 
do some damage there. So you can go ahead and do some more regular attacks. I, of course, have a better sword right now, so I am naturally doing a little bit more damage than you would probably do. Uh, there's the icy attack. The icy projectile attack is actually pretty easy to dodge since he pretty much only shoots it in the straight line in front of him. Uh, so it's pretty simplistic for the most part. There's the giant AoE attack. Just attack him normally. That's how it goes. With you, uh, the battle will take a little bit longer, of course, because, you know, like I was saying, it um, it's probably just gonna... Yeah. You, you might not have the better sword. And there we go. Once he's down, you'll actually see that there's the pearl. He might also drop other things like a wind sphere and, you know, a couple other things. A silver key, I think. Or it might be a gold key. Uh, those are not 100%, but the pearl is a 100% guaranteed drop. So if you can manage to kill this snow monster, you are guaranteed a pearl. You do need two for one of the best armors in the game. You are, sorry, I think three. And you need two for uh, the best sword in the game. Um, so, and then you also need one pearl to actually exchange to the uh, traveling merchant that you can find at night in Paw Village. So, you know, but um, other than that, that's actually it. I will actually tell you that um, yeah, the boss actually only spawns once a day. So if you try to just zone out and then zone back in, it's actually not going to work. Um, he will not be there. What you have to do actually is go back to Rivero Inn. Or you can also go back to uh, your farm, sleep, and then warp back here again and fight him and he will be there. But he will not be there more than once a day, so be very careful about that and try not to waste time with that. Other than that, that's actually it for this particular video. So before I end this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you enjoy the video. I will see you all later. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day.